Your Impinger oven is a major investment in guest satisfaction. You can increase the life of that investment and reduce component failure and the downtime associated with it by following some simple guidelines for operation and periodic cleaning. This tape should be used in conjunction with your Lincoln 1600 series low profile Impinger Advantage installation and operating instructions. Keep these manuals and refer to them. And follow all safety precautions as outlined in these manuals. Your Impinger oven is equipped with a state-of-the-art digital controller. The panel has a single on-off power switch which operates the fan, conveyor motor, and heat. The easy-to-use four push-button panel controls time, temperature, up, and down. The VFD display indicates the actual cavity temperature for the left and right side of the oven, conveyor speed, and heating indicator for left and right side. Follow this procedure for operating your Lincoln Impinger ovens. First, make sure your ventilation system is on and running properly. Then, to start the oven, push the on switch to on. Next, check to ensure that the oven is set for the correct bake time and temperature. You do this by pushing the time and temperature buttons at the same time for five seconds. This enters the set point mode. Once in set point, push the time button to see the set time. If set incorrectly, adjust to the proper time by scrolling up or down with the arrow keys. Once the time is set, push the temperature button to enter the temperature set point. The preset time will automatically be saved in the memory. Be sure to check both the left and right side temperatures to make sure they're correct. If the temperature is set incorrectly, adjust to the proper side needing adjusted by pushing the temperature button repeatedly until you have the correct side. Once the left or right side is selected, adjust the temperature setting by scrolling up or down with the arrow keys. When in Fahrenheit or F mode, the temperature is adjusted in 5 degree increments. When in centigrade or C mode, the temperature adjustment will be in 1 degree increments. Once the time and temperature are set correctly, release all buttons. After 5 seconds, the selected set points will be stored in the memory. In a few seconds, the heating indicator should come on. If the indicator does not light, turn the on switch off. Wait 5 minutes and turn the switch on again for gas ovens only. Allow 30 minutes for the oven to preheat. To shut down the impinger, push the on switch to the off position. Caution! Oven walls and parts will remain very warm after shutdown. You may also choose the direction of the conveyor belt. Use the conveyor toggle switch on the back of the oven. Maintaining your impinger oven involves a simple daily cleaning routine, a thorough weekly cleaning, and a few special projects every month. Daily cleaning is a simple process. First, using a non-caustic degreaser, wipe the outside surfaces with the grain using a clean, soft cloth. Then rinse with clean, warm water. Polish with a stainless steel cleaner. Always wipe with the grain using a soft cloth. The next daily job is to clean the conveyor belt. Brush it with a special wire brush, Lincoln Park number 369217. Next, remove the conveyor crumb pans and the takeoff shelves if purchased with the oven. Clean with non-caustic degreaser and rinse with clean water. Then clean loose particles from the bottom of the oven and wash the inside with a mild solution of soapy water. Rinse the inside with clean water also. Make sure the oven is at least six inches away from walls and combustible materials. Let's review the daily cleaning list. We cleaned and rinsed the exterior. Then we cleaned the conveyor belt with a wire brush. Then the conveyor crumb pans and takeoff shelves. We cleaned up loose particles inside the oven and checked the area for combustible materials. Thorough cleaning of the oven is a weekly task. Weekly cleaning includes the fingers, conveyor, end baffles, door, air intake vents, and stand. This process should take about an hour per oven. Be sure to leave the ventilation systems operating while cleaning the oven and be sure your work area is well ventilated. You'll need a non-caustic degreaser, 
a mild solution of soapy water, a three to five gallon bucket of warm rinse water, an oven brush, four or five dry towels, and a three compartment sink with faucet and sprayer. You'll need a long sleeve cotton shirt, a pair of goggles, and rubber gloves. The first weekly cleaning task is removing and cleaning the conveyor and end baffles. Remove the end baffles by turning the thumb screws counterclockwise. Spray them with non-caustic degreaser and allow them to sit while cleaning the conveyor. To remove the conveyor on a 1600 series impinger oven, remove the external crumb trays, remove the conveyor drive sprocket shield, lift the conveyor and slide it two to three inches into the oven cavity. This will put slack on the drive chain and allow for its removal. Lift and slide the entire conveyor out towards you. Removing the conveyor will require two people. We'll clean the conveyor over a three compartment sink. We're going to start by using our non-caustic degreaser. Spray the entire conveyor assembly with non-caustic degreaser. It will take about 20 minutes for the grease to dissolve. Then rinse and allow to dry. Now it's time to remove and clean the fingers and return air baffles. One word of caution. If the fingers get misadjusted during cleaning or get reinstalled in the wrong spots, you'll experience baking problems. Pay attention to how each finger is adjusted and replace each in the same position in the oven. You must first remove all four return air baffles. To do this, simply lift and remove each baffle through the front of the oven. When you're done, remove the top center fingers first. Then lift up and remove the other top fingers. Remove the top finger support bracket. Remove the bottom center fingers next, then the remaining bottom fingers. Remove the bottom fingers support bracket. Okay, the fingers are out, so let's start cleaning. First, slide the cover off the small end of the finger. Lift out the inner finger panel, also called the columnating panel. Spray the finger covers with non-caustic degreaser. Remember, it'll take about 20 minutes for the grease to dissolve. Wash the finger housings, columnating panels, and air return baffles in warm soapy water in the three compartment sink. Rinse off all parts with clear water. Then stand all the parts up to dry. While you're waiting for the fingers and conveyor to dry, you can clean the inside of the impinger oven. Remember that this is a daily task, but now that the fingers are out, you'll be able to clean more thoroughly. Use a non-caustic degreaser. Do not use a caustic oven cleaner or degreaser on the interior of the oven. Don't forget to clean the outside, too. Non-caustic degreaser can be used for spot applications on the outside of the oven if needed. Rinse with clean water inside and outside when finished. The parts you washed should be dry by now, so let's put the fingers back together. With the panel number facing up, insert the columnating panel so it fits under the lip of the finger housing. Slide the cover over the finger. Now we can reinstall the fingers. You'll notice that there are two different shaped finger housings. These correspond with the shape of the flanges on the rear cavity wall. Install the bottom fingers support bracket. Install the bottom fingers. Next, install the top fingers support bracket. And install the top fingers. Remember that you laid them out in order so you'd remember how they go back in. Make sure all the finger housings are fully seated around the plenum flanges. The holes must point toward the conveyor. Now reinstall the air return baffles. Make sure these are securely seated on the clips provided. You may need to use a flashlight to see in the back of the oven. If they're not installed properly, you may experience uneven baking results. Clean all of the vents and louvers that are on the right-hand side and rear of the oven. When the conveyor is dry, hold the right hand up slightly and reinsert the conveyor in the oven. To hook up the drive chain, lift the conveyor slightly and push it into the oven. Then attach the chain to the drive chain shaft. 
pull the conveyor toward you so the bar locks on the outside of the oven wall. Reinstall the drive sprocket shield. Never operate the oven without the guard. The Impinger 1600 series Advantage oven conveyor should not, in most cases, need any adjustment. But if the belt becomes too loose, consult the installation operating instructions manual or call your service agency to adjust it. Rinse the end baffles. Dry thoroughly and reposition each over the oven cavity opening. Next, slide the crumb pans into the rails under the conveyor. Spray the stand frame and casters with non-caustic degreaser and allow to sit. Rinse with clear water and wipe dry. Be sure to clean up any overspray on the floor. Let's review our weekly cleaning jobs. We disassembled and cleaned the conveyor belt, air return baffles, end baffles, and the fingers. Then we cleaned the inside and outside of the oven, including the air intake vents and louvers, and the stand. Then we reinstalled the fingers, air return baffles, end baffles, and the conveyor belt. To make the Impinger weekly cleaning tasks easier, there are spray-on soil shields available. These soil shield products are applied on finger covers, the back side of the oven door, and the inside oven cavity. After application, the soil shield product should be dry to the touch before baking food in the Impinger oven. Then, when you perform your next weekly cleaning tasks, the accumulated grease and debris rinse off with warm water. A new application is then applied and the cleaning cycle is continued. Consult your chemical or janitorial distributor for the names and availabilities of these products. Every three months you should be sure the sprockets on the conveyor shafts are aligned properly by checking to see if they're between the links, not on them, and not bunched together. Reposition and tighten the sprockets as needed. Periodically look over the oven to see if any switches, lights, dials, or hinges are damaged or broken. Your new impinger is equipped with three diagnostic messages to help you troubleshoot a specific problem yourself, or at least help you narrow it down. The messages you might encounter on the digital display are 1. LP, left probe fail or RP, right probe fail. This occurs when there's no temperature being sent to the controller from the baking chamber. This generally means a malfunctioning or failed thermoprobe. 2. Shorted probe. This occurs when a constant temperature signal is being sent to the controller from the baking chamber. This will happen if there is no heat being supplied to the oven for some reason. This can occur if the gas valve is shut off or disconnected. 3 belt jam. This will occur when there is a conveyor motor failure. These messages should be noted and communicated when calling your Lincoln authorized service agent. Now let's talk about what to do if your impinger oven seems to be malfunctioning but there are no diagnostic messages displayed. Before you make a service call there are a few things you should check out. We'll look at troubleshooting in terms of the symptom you observe and what might be causing it. You go to turn on the oven at the beginning of the workday and it did not respond by heating up. Always suspect the easy stuff first. Is the oven plugged in tightly? Check the temperature indicator light. Does it show that the oven is heating? If not, see if the temperature is set to the right temperature. If the thermostat is set right, see if the main fan is working by checking for air movement. If there is no air movement, the fan isn't working. So check the main circuit breaker and the main fan fuses on the oven. If you find a bad fuse, replace it. If the fuses are okay and you have an electric oven, there's nothing more you can do. Your authorized Lincoln service agent must be contacted. If the fuses are okay and your oven is gas fired, be sure the main shutoff valve is open. Check for kinks in the gas hose and make sure the gas connector is firmly locked into its receptacle. Beyond this, there's nothing more you can do. Your authorized Lincoln service agency must be contacted. Burnt products result from too high a temperature, too long a cooking time, or improperly installed columnating panels. First, see if all the fingers are installed properly. Then check the temperature set point. 
if the temperature is set properly but the products are overcooked, the oven could be out of calibration. If the timer shows it's set properly, time it against a stopwatch. Start the stopwatch when the leading edge of the pan enters the oven. Stop the watch when the leading edge exits the oven. If the conveyor speed mechanism needs recalibration, your authorized Lincoln Service Agency must be contacted. In the meantime, you can try to compensate by adjusting the conveyor speed up or down until help arrives. Undercooked products can result from several things. First, be sure you're not placing the food product too far into the oven cavity. The leading edge should be just at the conveyor opening. And don't pull the product out of the oven too soon. Next, if the temperature is set properly but the products are undercooked, the oven could be out of calibration. If the conveyor speed shows it's set properly, time it against the stopwatch using the leading edge in to leading edge out method we used earlier. Again, if the time temperature mechanism needs calibration, your authorized Lincoln service representative should be contacted. And of course you can compensate by adjusting the belt speed up or down until help arrives. If time and temperature aren't your problem, it could be the columnating panels were not installed properly. If you're still having a problem, see if the main fan is working by checking for air movement. If the fan isn't running, check the main circuit breaker and the main fan fuses. If you have a gas-fired oven, check to be sure the main shutoff valve is open. Check for kinks in the gas hose, and be sure that the gas connector is firmly locked to its receptacle. If you do all this and the oven is still not performing properly, it's time to call your authorized service agency. Another situation you might run into is a conveyor belt that won't move. If this happens, your display might show the diagnostic message, Belt Jam. This occurs when the conveyor motor fails, so you'll need to call your Lincoln Authorized Service Agency. If this does not happen, check to see that the belt speed control was not accidentally turned all the way down. Check the drive sprocket chain to ensure they're connected properly. Take corrective action as needed. Next, check your main circuit breakers and fuses. If the conveyor stopped when the oven was hot, it could be overheating. Check and clean the ventilation louvers and cooling fan covers if needed. It could also be a mechanical malfunction. With the circuit breaker off, so the conveyor can't start accidentally, disconnect the drive sprocket chain. Then gently push and pull the conveyor to see that it moves freely. If it doesn't, look for some obstruction or binding. If the conveyor moves freely, then turn the circuit breaker back on, turn the oven on, and check to see if the motor shaft is rotating. If the motor drive shaft won't turn, you'll have to call your authorized Lincoln Service Agency. Periodic cleaning and preventative maintenance will help to prevent malfunctions and extend the life of your impinger oven. Today, most service agencies offer a reasonably priced preventative maintenance program. We recommend that you contact your authorized Lincoln Service Agency and ask for details. Please remember that when needed, consulting your operating manual and this videotape and using a few simple troubleshooting techniques can help save you a service call. When you need help, your authorized Lincoln Service representative is available. We want you and your Lincoln Impinger Oven to keep your guests content for years to come.